Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and today I'm back for Hypixel Skyblock for another tutorial, and today is all about 10 unique money-making methods in this game, and yes, even after many months of playing this game and uploading hundreds of videos, I somehow managed to find 10 more money-making methods. These are a bit more obscure. I'm not going to claim that they're the best money-making methods because I think it's pretty well known at this point that if you're going for straight up speed, it's uh, right now at least sugarcane and summoning eyes. But if you're too lazy to do those things or if you see a big opportunity in the market, and you might be able to make a, a lot more in the short term, then here you go. The first strategy is opening up white gifts. So you would go over to the bazaar, head over to the white gift section, buy, uh, you know, 10, 20 stacks of these, and then you open them with some friends, or what I'm about to do, just open them in a public lobby. Let's see if we can find someone that actually will take some gifts. There you go. So I just went in the lobby, opened up some gifts, and as you can see, I got two Mining XP Boost 3 potions. Or two potions, right? So, the thing about white gifts is that they have a chance to give you uh, snow armor, or snow minions, or most importantly, these XP Boost potions. Now, when you get these potions, you can actually go into the bazaar and purchase an enchanted redstone lamp. Right now, they're actually pretty cheap, only about 80,000 coins. So I've got whole chests full of these unupgraded potions. So just to go with the theme here, we're gonna go with mining. Grab three of any XP boost potion that you get from these gifts. And then let's head in here. I have an enchanted redstone lamp. Throw these in like that. And adding the redstone lamp will not only upgrade these from um, tier one or tier two to tier three, but it will also increase the time by a lot. So let's just wait a few seconds. It doesn't matter if it's a combination of tier ones or tier twos. And boom, as you can see, we have three identical potions, mining XP boost three. Anyways, these are useful because you can immediately use them for, you know, leveling up minions, leveling up pets, but they do sell for a good amount in the auction house. Would highly recommend that first of all, people take advantage of these. I mean, Especially if you use a parapet and uh, an artifact, what's it called? Potion of the artifact, you get like an hour and a half of 20% more experience. Extremely useful. It's something that, you know, not a lot of people have really been taking part in. But that being said, it's a good way to make money. Also, uh, snowsuit armor really doesn't sell for that much. Uh, as well as snow minions, they actually sell for pretty decent. The problem is you can't really sell them in the auction house or bazaar. You have to find someone to directly trade with but snow minions are they are great if you were to have like 24 tier 11 snow minions down which is super cheap to do by the way you can get like 1.7 million coins per day farming pumpkins is a really great way to not only get money by just selling pumpkins but at the same time you can level up any farming pet uh, technically you can level up other pets as well but it i don't think it's worth your time to level up a pet with its non-primary skill but there are a few uh, farming pets in this game that if you were to be a mad lad and, for example, get a pet to level 100, then it will sell for a lot. Like, we're talking in the 50 million range, depending on the pet, because people are lazy. They don't want to level up their pet manually. So if there was the option to go into the auction house and just buy a level 100 pet of the one they want, chances are they're going to go for it. You know, end game players don't want to spend hours of their life farming pumpkins but you know you can take advantage of that and again you still get a decent amount of pumpkins about an hour's worth of farming pumpkins gets 400k coins and then the huge payoff at the end would be oh there you go just leveled it up to 61 uh the payoff at the end could be selling a pet that you bought for let's say two mil and reselling it for 50 mil after i don't know let's say a week or two of leveling up it's good to give your pet a farming xp boost item it gives 40 percent more xp which levels it up faster also uh, it's good to have a farming xp boost potion if i were to use something for example like the rabbit pet i get 6.8 xp per pumpkin if i were to drink the potion i would be getting 8.1 xp per potion really great <laughs> and that's another way to make money 
okay so this next one is fairly self-explanatory or obvious but i'd like to stress how important it is to take advantage of interest so if we go into the bank upgrade screen as you can see the starter account which is free has a maximum balance of 50 million coins and if you look at interest the first 10 million coins in your bank yield one percent interest and from 10 million coins to 15 million coins you get one percent interest what is interest well the banker rewards you every 31 hours with interest for the coins in your bank balance so for me i have 21 million coins and if you look into the account screen i have the gold account so i've upgraded my bank once this gives me a max balance of 100 million coins which is nice but more importantly that 10 to 15 mil turns into 10 to 20 mil for one percent interest so every 31 hours i get 300,000 coins now this is cool because i did the math right so every 31 hours i get 300,000 coins that means roughly 240,000 coins per day and it is the equivalent of about four tier 11 snow minions with enchanted lava buckets and diamond spreading so yeah just keeping 20 million coins in your bank at my level or even 15 mil if you're in the default account will give you like three to four snow minions worth of profit in addition to what you make literally for free so uh yeah just if you can if you have the money it's worth investing get to the gold account and then treat 20 million coins as your new zero once you've done that you technically have the same profits as i don't know 28 minion slots next up fishing is actually a good way to make money now as of recent updates i think mostly bizarre it actually makes sense to fish so just fishing in the park while there's other people in your lobby with rain i literally just queued this lobby like three seconds ago and these people already had rain on so that's pretty cool i'd suggest lobby hopping until you find someone that is you know constantly using rain like this now it's important when you're fishing to have a pet on you that you know will help out with fishing now if you're in one of these lobbies with a whole bunch of people you can actually use the dolphin pet i got this just by fishing you know and it's a common i think you have to kill like 250 sea creatures to get one and its ability will allow you to catch things faster and the more you fish the higher level dolphin pet you get which is actually really cool now if you want to get you know fishing xp you're good getting a squid uh the squid pets are actually pretty great because you get more squids and you get double drops yeah grabbing yourself something like a rod of champions salty reforge max enchants on it if possible fishing out here in the park actually gets decent money now if you get fishing 25 then you have the chance to get a yeti in the jerry pond which is only accessible uh in a 12 hour period well i think it's 13 hour period technically six hours before the jerry event and six hours after the jerry event one of them just passed so as you can see in the next four days seven hours there's a season of jerry six hours before this the island will open and it will stay open until six hours after and that's when you can uh, go ice fishing now ice fishing doesn't make nearly as much as regular fishing if you don't get any special drops but again if you get a yeti then you can get i think it's a hilt of true ice which is a crafting component for the yeti sword you can also get a yeti rod a fishing rod that's worth a lot of money i think it's like in the ten of tens of millions and the yeti pet the baby yeti pet can get even more coins but if you want something that's stable and predictable then just doing a regular old you know park fishing session with the rain active preferably if someone else is getting the rain and you're just kind of leeching it then um then you make a decent amount of coins i would say anywhere from 600,000 to a million per hour now of course it's good to have diver set i'm doing this in a young set if i wanted to get extra magic find i could use superior armor also i forgot to mention there is a chance to get a whole bunch of pets through fishing it is very rare but if you land any of those rare fishing pets then that is big money uh especially if you were to get something like um let's see flying fish is probably about two mil if it's a legendary if you were to get i don't know dolphins are worth a pretty decent amount and as i said uh they're a progression pet which means the more sea creatures you kill the higher level one you get guaranteed i think the second tier which is uncommon is at a thousand sea creature kills 
so this is my yield from literally like a minute and a half of fishing this is when you head over to the bazaar i think ink sells for a lot of money so that's one of the big earners here so again from only a minute we can head over to bazaar and then click this button which will sell everything and that sold it for twelve thousand coins in literally a minute not bad oh and make sure you always have uh spiked bait unless you're going for something like uh the lucky clover which is a drop from the carrot king which i think is a fishing 20 or something I, maybe fishing 15 i'm not really sure but um if you want that if you're going for that pet item they do sell for pretty decent in the ah let me see lucky clovers as you can see they sell for pretty decent i mean no one's really got any real bids on them but i guarantee they will sell for like a mill around a mill so you know you could use carrot bait to do that if you like for my next strategy i will introduce to you the raider axe and the endermite pet so the thing that makes the endermite special is if you look at its abilities pearl muncher upon picking up an ender pearl consume it and gain five coins now that's i'm pretty sure at level one this is really cool because this pet gives you free money for ender pearls now mine is currently upgrading a cat right now which is a little unfortunate but let's say i got an ender my pet and then we went to the end with the raider axe killing 9,000 health enderman with the raider axe and the endermite pet will yield something like 150 coins per kill just the raider axe alone is about 100 coins per kill and once you level up the endermite pet a bit more you might get something like 200 coins per kill now i'm not one tapping because i my reforge is all screwed up from the fire trial also i'm using a full wise in uh, reforge junk zip let's ignore that right now so you can either kill enderman in here which will yield something like maybe 500,000, 600,000 coins per hour. Depends how high a level your Endermite pet is. Or you can head into the uh, the Dragon's Nest here. I wouldn't even recommend going for Zealots because the competition's like stupid. But what you could do, right? I mean, if you see one, you can kill it. You should target Watchers because they will give pearls as well, which means even more money from the Pearl Muncher perk. Also, they're pretty high level, so you get a decent amount of coins from killing them. Also, you're kind of doing a service to the people that are, you know, farming zealots, which is nice. But, you know, people just ignore the watchers. But you, you want coins directly, and you can't get 500% speed. So, it's in your best interest to kill these watchers. Also, you can get enchanted bones, which is nice, I guess. And the Pearl Muncher perk will make it so you don't just constantly collect pearls. Also, you can kill Obsidian Defenders, but that's not going to really synchronize or it's not gonna you know give you any additional bonuses with the pearl muncher perk you really want to target watchers or the 9000 health enderman and this will get you a decent amount of coins i would avoid endermites though which is annoying then of course once you're done uh you know i have like 50,000 coins let me just incidentally from doing all these money making strats i can just go in here sell that not to bathe of course instead of selling the pearls i would actually be eating the pearls and then of course selling the enchanted bones and stone whatever okay so this next one's kind of annoying to do but it does make a pretty good profit like this might be the most profitable strategy in this entire video and that would be crafting maxed out enchanted books so again people are lazy they don't want to fully max out their sword well they they want to but they're too lazy to actually do it so what they're going to be doing is checking in the auction house let's say sharpness i don't know let's go into sharpness look in the consumables category someone made a book that is sharpness five critical five first strike four giant killer five execute five lethality ender slayer cubism impaling vampires and life steal looting lux scavenger experience thunderlord whatever right this is a max enchantment book as you can see it's selling for six hundred thousand coins this is um oh it's another one of those sharp six books here's an identical one to the other one easy to make books selling for three or six hundred thousand coins five hundred thousand coins this one's selling oh you could sell for five hundred thousand coins uh, oh wow there's a whole bunch of them look at this there's another one and another one but this one's got some weird enchants i want to go for that or that that one i'd go for see there's a pattern right these books look very similar when they're made correctly if you have like every book unlocked in your recipes here if you go to enchantment recipes i have the recipes for every single enchantment except for in mutton collection i'm missing one apparently 
but you can craft all of these books for example cubism pumpkins then you got sharpness iron sword and flint you craft it you get the tier four version of the book you craft two of those together to get the tier five or if it's a you know a tier two for example looting craft two of them together to get looting three uh, or if you want to be fancy you can actually buy um some of the tier four potions from the jerry event for extremely cheap the point i'm trying to make though these books cost near nothing to make like for example if i go back into the recipes right sharpness right that costs literally two times this so 16 flint two iron swords or just four iron ingots and then you get like what 48 paper between the two books it literally costs nothing it's like less than 100 coins probably if it's 100 coins it might be 200 coins i don't know it's very inexpensive right what you could do is you combine the books together actually i'm gonna leave a card in the top right hand corner for how to make this book with the least amount of xp possible it's with a concept called anvil use resetting so basically what you want to do right is go into your um recipes pick out every sword enchantment so cubism sharpness looting scavenger experience thunderlord ender slayer execute first strike giant killer life steal vampirism luck impaling oh don't do cleave uh lethality don't do knockback venomous is good critical is very good you can get growth or you can get critical five for extremely cheap because it drops from spends in the auction house but anyway yeah so you get all these books together you craft them all fill your inventory with tier four books you head over to an anvil you combine them all together uh, then you can combine all the books together that will cost a lot of experience though now there's two ways to get experience really fast the number one method for me is actually heading over to the crypt and killing a bunch of crypt ghouls and that gets xp fairly fast i mean as you can see i have like 400 and something levels it's ridiculous but uh let's imagine i didn't it looks like it's not a lot of xp but literally killing one crypt ghoul will get you from zero xp to like 10 or 12 xp you could also drink an experience potion which will give you more experience if you have uh, experience on your sword you'll get more experience so yeah once you've gotten experience you could then use it to combine all the books together anvil use reset every time it gets to three uh anvil uses and then produce a god book or a semi-god book it's not going to be the best enchants in the game because you know tier six enchantments but it is just what a mid-game player would want for example they just bought an aote maybe they just want to slap one book on it and then instantly have a maxed out aspect of the end right they're willing to pay five to six hundred thousand coins for it and you could probably if you get the system down to like maybe 20 minutes you could probably make one of those books in 10 20 minutes now if you want to really make the process fast you can just buy a bunch of lapis from the bazaar and then make yourself it's extremely cheap right now the prices are dead it's like thirty-seven thousand per stack six stacks of this will make one stack of grand experience bottles again with an experience potion uh one experience or one um one grand bottle will give you like 30 something levels maybe even 40 levels and then that will give you more than enough to combine like three four books and then you know if i had to guess making one quote god book would be take probably 16 to half a stack of grands which again is worth like maximum 100,000 coins so that'd make it really fast you'd probably profit something like 400,000 coins per book and if you can manage to do like three four of them just making four books and selling them every hour will probably profit you like 1.6 mil if you can manage five books an hour that's two million coins an hour so it's actually a really great method of making money and I guess on the bright side me talking about this will make it easier for players to just insta max out their swords for really cheap but yeah that's a great way of making money oh and one other thing is setting a buy it now price for like 500k 600k will probably make it a bit easier and make it even more convenient right because then they don't have to fight people in the auction house for these books if you're gonna sell one of these you'd probably want it to be something like this three anvil uses so critical five they got from uh, a sven or buying it from the auction house so there's a little bit more investment here you could probably get away with selling crit four you know that's a great book though that i don't think it's worth 750,000 coins more like 600,000 coins maybe but yeah 
anyway enough with that strategy i think you guys get the point okay the next strat is actually pretty easy it doesn't require much active effort all you have to do is make your way over to somewhere like the end and then hit the teleport pad and go back to the spider's den check how many people are in the lobby right this is a spider's den that's got a lot of people in it and then we go back now i'm in the end and as you can see there's people here so i go back so what you're trying to find is a lobby that has either no people in it or like only a couple people like three to four now as high pixel skyblock gets more and more full this will become more and more rare but if you just so happen to find a private lobby you could actually get a decent amount of money for it selling it to the right person if you're in like some discord server that has a lot of people actively looking for private lobbies then you could potentially find one so for example the value of a private spiders then would be being able to do slayers without people messing you up uh, a private end lobby is easily worth two summoning eyes or 800,000 coins so if you find an empty end lobby sell it to somebody party them and then you tell them to go through the the gate not uh don't warp them in because if you warp them in make, if you warp them in it could ruin the lobby but um you could sell somebody a private lobby then you'll make a pretty decent amount of money now you know an empty spiders then might not sell but if you do manage to sell it could be maybe four hundred thousand coins or something like that but uh yeah i have done this a couple times so i've actually been shown private lobbies for the end for example grind eyes in there for like three hours and there's no one else in there and then i get bored of it so i sell it for two summoning eyes to somebody else so they give me two summoning eyes i let them get in the lobby and then i i leave so yeah that could be a good way to make money if you got nothing else to do other than just walking back and forth in the teleport pads um i'm not sure if there's much value in other private lobbies because of course the main hub you can find one extremely easily so there's not much point to sell one uh blazing fortress there's just no need for a private blazing fortress there's nothing you really need to do in there it's mostly with these two islands luckily they are connected so you have the chance to find one or the other uh with the same process okay so this next concept has to do with the traveling zoo event which happens i think it's every two and a half days or maybe it's like three days whatever the top pet is the legendary pet this strategy involves making a whole bunch of it or buying a whole bunch of it and then holding on to it for a few days and then reselling in the auction house so pay attention in the auction house to the price of a legendary pet uh compare it to the cost of buying the pet at a ringo and reselling the auction house could make millions for example right when the when the tiger pet was brand new i bought four of them sold three and the profit was able to pay for the fourth one so i basically got a free tiger pet out of it so that's like about 16 mil in profit from selling only three tigers and that so it could be good but it really depends on the market okay so the next strat in this uh video is probably the easiest so the strat is literally to wait until the new year's event pick up a cake and if you're not one of those people like me that's literally collecting every single year's cake get a cake and immediately sell it in the auction house people will go crazy for it especially if it's an old cake you might get like 300k to 600k per cake now, if you just so happen to have one from like any year before 54, it might sell for like maybe even seven, 800K. If it's one of the first years, like first or second, then it might sell for a couple mil. It is, it really depends. If someone really needs the cake, they might fight for it and way overpay. And sometimes people might underpay. You know, it's a very fluid market. It's a very unstable market is what I should have said. Yeah, if you just don't have any interest in cakes, you might as well just grab it from the event put it straight in the auction house or wait like a month and then put it in the auction house so an old cake will go for a lot more than a brand new one all right so for this final suggestion this is one of those statements that gets the forums all riled up saying that i got an ego or whatever but it is a fact that whenever any youtuber with influence right any youtuber that pulls views if they talk about a new pet a new bow a new sword any new item they maybe talk about a new money making method they talk about uh, some hidden strategy that no one knew before the value of items having to do with that thing that they said will shoot up for example i made a video talking about how the magma bow 
is actually better than a runan's in dungeons per shot you will do at least 20 percent more damage but maybe even more it depends how high your stats are because this doubles your stats so technically if you had like level 50 skills if you had all your talismans then that double doubling of stats actually gives you even more damage over a runan's and it's like a hundred and twenty thousand coins compared to almost a mil for a runan's so anyway when i said that the value of magma cream quadrupled in the first hour and then immediately after it leveled off and you know went a bit higher than where it was before but not nearly where it was at the peak so what is the money making strat well subscribing to this channel turning on post notifications and joining the discord discord.gg 30 virus if you're one of the first people to watch say an episode of solo skyblock or a tutorial or any skyblock video i upload uh, if I mention an item or a strategy, chances are the price will very briefly spike up. If you're one of the first people in a video, then you'll have the chance to go into Bazaar, uh, maybe buy instantly a whole bunch of that thing, and then let's say wait until 30 minutes to an hour after upload, the price quadruples in the case of Magma Cream, then you sell it all for massive profit. I'm kicking myself because I really could have done that. I could have just made a buy order of like, I don't know, 20,000 enchanted magma cream, uploaded the video and then just resold it an hour after and made four times my money, potentially making tens of millions of coins. But you guys are still able to do that, just not right before the upload, but just as the upload's happening and people aren't realizing the strat yet. So literally, it is an actual money-making method to be first to watch the videos. I mean, again, hashtag ego virus, but it is a fact that these things happen. I'm not saying this be out of ego. I'm saying this out of prior observations. I guess that's it. If you like this video, again, subscribe, post notifications. It's important. And also the Discord server. I'll be leaving that in the pinned comment down below. Uh, you get pinged every time I upload, like immediately. <laughs> well, anyway, I guess that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.